Father, right now, I bind every spirit that would hinder, distract. I bind all the familiar spirits. There will be no partying in the atmosphere. In Jesus' name. I bind every uh, spirit of Antichrist, every religious spirit. Lord, I send out the warring angels. I call on them to come and do warfare over this place that we might have an open heaven to receive everything that you have for us today and, the, and tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. I am going to talk about something today that's not really easy to talk about, but needs to be talked about. If the emails that I'm getting is any like barometer or measuring stick, I've been having to send out this information so many times I thought, Lord, this must need to be taught again but it is and if you don't are not familiar with the term and if you hear anything here today that you don't understand or that you immediately something in you wants to push it away what I've learned to do is just say Lord I'm going to put that on a shelf and I need you to talk to me about it and he will but that way you leave yourself open you know to what he wants you to know Okay, the, the title of this message is The Spirit of the Bride of Satan. Now, I had very limited understanding on this. Frank Marzullo Sr. wrote a, a booklet on it, and uh, when I first got into deliverance, his brother Ernie uh, sent me all, everything, uh, VCR tapes, cassette tapes, books, and I camped out on those things for a very long time. And I had read that little booklet, but I had no understanding of it at all. But one time I was here, it's been years ago, and there was a lady here who, every time she came, she had the same sadness, the same, I don't mean this in a critical way, but a haggard look, just a really tormented look. and. My heart went out to her, started praying for her when I would leave camp because, Lord, most of the time when people come, they may look that way when they get here, but they look different when they leave. But she didn't. And every time she would come, it would be that same look. And I had begun to pray for her. Well, anyway, um, Dr. Null, if, if y'all knew Dr. Null, he was an awesome man and could usually put his finger on the thing whatever it was and and he would pray for her every time and one time out of the blue and I don't even know if I was teaching at the time but he said he called me over and he said pray for her and it was terrifying because oh my goodness Dr. Null <laughs> if you can't I mean it was scary so I was standing there and big tears were rolling down her face and in my heart, I was just saying, Lord, what is it? What is it? And I heard the spirit of the bride of Satan. And I didn't even know what to do with that. And so she was taller than I, and I stood on my tiptoes because I didn't want anybody else to hear me say it. And so I just whispered in her ear, I am speaking to the spirit of the bride of Satan. And when I did that, her or I thought she was going to hit me. <laughs> but her arms flew up like that and she crossed her chest and she fell on her face, literally on the floor, like a tree trunk. And it scared me. Now, that's an important thing to remember. And I have learned that Satan uses those things to distract us. I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, and it scared me. And it made me think, one time I was reading the story about the boy who had the fits that was thrown into the fire. The disciples were going to try to cast that spirit out. And he fell down foaming at the mouth. And, and they couldn't cast the spirit out. I said, I bet I know what happened. That freaked them out. And they, they thought that thing was just too much for them. But, but the devil loves to do that. He loves to catch you off guard. And he loves to distract you to pull you away from what should be taking place. So anyway, um, immediately I got down on the floor 
and I was going to turn her over. And it was like she was nailed to the floor. I could not move her one inch. It was like all of a sudden she was a concrete statue that was too heavy for me to pull over. And that was astonishing. What in the world is happening? And so when I looked up in my amazement, there was a man. My eyes just went on the man. And I... <laughs> so he came over and it took both of us to turn her over. When we turned her over, she was not breathing. And I just immediately started binding the spirit of death and commanding breath into her. And she took a breath and she sat up, but she was not there. I mean, it was just like someone had yanked her. In fact, I thought, has she asked her projected somewhere? Because nobody's home. And and she remained that way. Now some other people came over and started praying and casting and binding and all different kinds of things. And then all of a sudden in my mind, I had this picture. My little granddaughter was probably about five at the time. She's almost 15 now, so that's how long ago it was. And um, she began to cry. And I could see in the spirit a little girl, a scared little girl. And so I, I got two chairs, and I, I put her in a chair, and I sat beside her. And I did with her what I would have done to the scared little girl. I just pulled her to me and began to rock her. And she started to cry even more. And then she got in my ear, and she said, Can I tell you a secret? That was startling. It was a little girl's voice. And I said, you can tell me anything. So she began to tell me that the mean man would come and get her. And you can imagine the rest. And then I knew what was happening. And this had been happening to her since she was little. Now, the molestation didn't continue all those years. But when the molestation stopped, the demon started. And that is the demon that I'm calling the spirit of the bride of Satan. And what I've learned over the years is that people who are sexually abused for a long period of time, um, maybe it was a rape, um, if you were in the occult, sometimes there's satanic ritual abuse, sexual... Let me tell you, sex, the sex act, is the highest form of control in witchcraft on this earth. Amen. And that's why Satan uses it so much. Um, because you gain a control over the person. That soul tie thing, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, it's very strong. And But when these type things happen to a person, and it can even be generationally inherited. If someone in the bloodline had that spirit, it can pass on down. And what I call that is a familiar spirit. Because I know that growing up, I suffered many manifestations. I'm pretty sure if there was a psychologist in my elementary school, they probably said that little girl is being molested or something to that effect because it was born into me I, I didn't inherit the spirit of the bride of Satan but I inherited manifestations of sexual molestation and it manifested itself through masturbation from a little bitty girl I was at a women's conference Years and years and years ago, it's just a brand new Christian. And the woman said, I want you to close your eyes and think of the very first memory that you have. And then she opened the floor for people to share what their very first memory. Oh, I remember when I got my very first baby doll or my very first, you know, and I was horrified at my memory. <laughs> because that's 
was my very first memory. So it must have been going on for many, many years. It was a generationally inherited curse. Now, there are those who will say, oh, I don't believe there's any such thing as generational curses. Well, if you look at alcoholism, 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 cancer, 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 abuse, 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 you know, those things, I mean, even medical science with sicknesses, you go to the doctor, they give you that form, it's got no, I haven't been to the doctor in so long, I don't know how long the form is now, but every disease known to man and syndromes and disorders, it's all there for you to check. You know why? Because they know it runs in families. They know what to look for. You do most of your own diagnosis on those forms. They just, I mean, no offense to doctors. I have a son that's a doctor. I know there's a lot of study that goes into that. And I'm not knocking that. But I'm, the point I'm making is science has proven that there are such things as generational curses. And one time I was having a discussion with a man and he said, there's no such thing as generational curses. And Jesus Christ became the curse. He took the curse. He was the curse. We're all free of the curse. Well, theoretically, that's true. So I didn't say anything. And when I got in the car, I said, Lord, what do you say to someone who has that belief? And, you know, when I say those things to God, I don't expect an answer just like that. Sometimes it takes a long time for the answer to come, but that day it was immediate. And I heard, if there were no such thing as generational curses, there would be no need for anyone to be saved. Because what we need to be saved from happened with Adam and Eve in the garden. And how many generations ago was that? Yes, they are real. But the good news is, we don't have to keep them. Another person said, well, I was talking about alcoholism and drug abuse in our family, and suicide, and mental illness, and the list goes on. I said, those are curses. Oh, I don't believe. Those are, those are not curses. And I said, well, would you call them a blessing? <laughs> There's blessings and there's cursings. You can read in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It gives a list of blessings and it gives a list of cursings. You can find every sickness in those, in those descriptions, those curses that are listed. <coughs> yes, they're real. I like to use um, John chapter 11. This is the story of Lazarus coming out of the grave. We all know the story. Is there anyone here who does not know the story? We all know the story. Okay. So the scriptures that I want to really look at is verse 42. Jesus said, he's praying, well, let me just, the prayer starts in 41 when Jesus said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people who stand by, I said that they might believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus said, had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. That's what we're going to be talking about. This, this thing is a grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a cloth. Jesus said unto them, all the people that were there, loose him and let him go. See, Jesus resurrected Lazarus, but he didn't take the grave clothes off Lazarus. He gave that to the people to do. And that's what deliverance is all about. Stripping the grave clothes off. If nobody had taken those grave clothes off Lazarus, he would have had a hard time 
living his life. And that was my testimony of being saved, born again, filled with the Spirit, but I could not successfully live this life. I was like Paul. When I wanted to do good, evil was present. The very thing I didn't want to do is what I did. Without deliverance, that's where you're going to stay. So I, I don't understand why the body of Christ as a whole does not embrace the casting out of demons. Well, yeah, there's been a lie, the devil called a lie. And that is that a Christian cannot have a demon. Well, when the woman came to Jesus and said, my daughter is vexed with a demon. She wanted her daughter delivered. But guess what? Jesus said, it's not right to take what belongs to the children and give it to the dogs. Because it belongs to the children. God's children. Those that belong to God. The, the casting out of demons is for the sanctification of our bodies. When we get saved, our spirit is sealed, it says, until the day of redemption with the Holy Ghost. But our soul and our bodies are not. It'll be going on until we enter heaven. But really, every time the corporate body of Christ comes together, that corporate anointing in each one of us, there is a power there for people to get saved and healed and delivered. So it's important. Without it, the best you can have is a mixture. You have someone who's been born again, but they've got demons. Maybe they were in the occult and then they become a Christian. So now they're going to live for God. But guess what? They had a spirit of divination from the occult and it gets mixed up with prophecy and sometimes and there's a lot of that out there it's not specifically a word from God it's mixed with divination and then you've received it as a word from God we have to be careful really careful with that Many lives have been absolutely wrecked by words from well-meaning people who think the gift that they're using is from God, and it's not always, because it's a mixture. So we need to get our vessels purified and get those things out. And the only way you can do it is to cast it out in the name of Jesus. You can't send it, I call that the demon, to a psychiatrist and they're going to get rid of it. It doesn't happen. There, you can't go to the doctor and get a pill for it. It's not going to help it. These things, God says in his word, will be cast out in the name of Jesus. And that's what we do here. You know, thank God like Hamilton is here. People come and get demons cast out. Now, I have introduced deliverance to some. Oh, I, I got delivered years ago. Okay. It's not an event. It is a lifestyle. You may have gotten some deliverance then, but there's more and more and more. And the way God laid that out to me was by using the tabernacle in the Old Testament which was three parts inner court, outer court, holy of holies we are referred to as the temple of the Holy Ghost and we're three parts, body, soul and spirit Jesus comes in he lives in our spirit but the body and the soul is something different so when Jesus in the New Testament went into the temple and they were money changing he had to cast them out. It said after they were out, the blind, the sick, and the lame could come in and be healed. And it's true with us. 
We have junk in our flesh that causes sickness. But when you cast those things out, then you can receive healing. Jesus many times had to deal with the demons before he dealt with healing. He would cast out the spirit, lay hands on them, and heal them. It's all connected. So we can't have we can't leave anything off, in other words. Okay. So back to the girl. I told her that we were going to get rid of the mean man. That's when I learned about the mean man spirit. And you know, it's mentioned in the Bible, mean man. Yeah. I was surprised at that. So I broke all of those curses and cast out the spirits of molestation, cut off the hands of the person that was hurting her. Um, and then when I got to the part remembering God said the spirit of the bride of Satan, I thought, I'm just going to I'm just going to do this because it came to my mind. Today we are going to give Satan a spiritual writ of divorcement. Praise God. And get rid of it. No more. No more access. What was happening? And I didn't, I didn't know this at the time, but about three weeks after camp, she called me. And she said, I didn't want to speak too soon because I wanted to make sure it was really real. But she had not been raped by a demon since then. That's powerful. The reason she looked so haggard, so worn, so sad, and all of that was because the spirit of the bride of Satan was using her for his pleasure. It's like being a sex slave for Satan. He gives your body access to demonic activity, spiritual, sexual stuff. And I heard on TV one time, Mike and I were watching a, one of those magazine shows like 2020 or whatever, and that there was a table of women. There were about 12 women around this table. Many of them had their faces blurred because they were talking about this phenomenon of um, spontaneous orgasm. And it was driving them insane. Some women had committed suicide over it because it was a hopeless situation. They were being tormented day and night. It, I mean, they would talk about like uh, being sitting at their desk at work and this being tormented by this. They didn't know that it was a spirit. They didn't know what it was. And neither did doctors. And I thought, how sad. I bet some of those people even go to church. But there's no help if you don't know about it. And if you don't have it dealt with, it just stays there. And there are physical, there are even physical bodily responses. Like a person had actually had intercourse. Some are very violent and hurt, hurt the women. And I'm sure this happens with men too. When I started learning about this, I thought, oh, okay, see, because we, we hear about incubus and succubus, and we sometimes deal with those spirits, but they don't stay gone. And that's whenever I started, you know, giving that spiritual root of divorcement. Let's, do, let's try this. Let's just see. And it puts a stop to it. So I'm led to think that the spirit of the bride of Satan is like a ruler spirit, a strong man, the, the one that's over incubus and succubus. So that's the one I want to deal with, to put an end. 
Now, I have heard it said that a generational curse will not be a part of your life unless you activate it. And I thought, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure that it's just the opposite. It's the presence of that generational curse that will even lead you into whatever it is. You know, because what would give a three-year-old the idea to masturbate? Nobody, I didn't have to see it. Nobody had to teach it to me. And there's a misunderstanding because I had the misunderstanding. I hated that thing, but I had no control over it. And I couldn't wait till I got married so I would have a man. You know, if I had a man, then I wouldn't do that. But guess what? I got married and it showed up still demanding to be satisfied. That was so tormenting. I even told my husband about it. He, he just thought it was weird. Well, if you don't know about it, and I didn't, it was weird to me too. And so in some of these emails, well, the question that was posed to me is, and, and by more than one woman, many people, do you think it's wrong? Is masturbation wrong? And I send them one of my teachings that I've taught on it. And they want to defend it. They want to tell me, no, I think you're wrong because, see, I don't, it, I know you're, you have a husband. And I'm thinking, yeah, but it still showed up until it was cast out. Then, then if, if the, the temptation of it comes, I had the power to stand against it. But when it was still there, I had no power. It would torment me and torment me and torment me until you satisfy it. And that's how I see that demons, they're in you and they, just, they want to be satisfied. If it's murder, it's murder. If it's stealing, it's stealing. Whatever the demon is, it's down in here. And you may be just living life and doing just fine. And all of a sudden, it comes up. And I see it like this. Okay, right now, it's me and the demons down here. And then it starts coming up. When it gets there, it puts you under and takes control. People say, yeah, but you, you decided to give in to it. Well, I know in my own life that was not true. I did not want to. I did not want to. When I had that spirit that we call Jezebel, that overbearing, demanding, angry, that thing, and I hated that. I hated it. But see, the devil had me convinced that it was me. That was me. I was so glad to find out about demons to learn that I am not an evil person. Those are we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We are our war is with the satanic forces. That's where our war is. And so but when that thing and it comes at an opportune time. When I'm at home by myself, she doesn't show up. If my husband's there and we're having a dispute, she shows up. And I would even say, I would see what a woman, a, a godly woman was supposed to be like and that's what I wanted to be. But when that thing, I'm telling you, it was like a volcano. I could feel it way down. <laughs> And it would be, and I would be going, I'm not going to do my, and, you know, because, whoop, and there it is. And all that's left for me after e is the damage. 
cruel. Demons are cruel and destructive. Okay, so many women, I believe, are affected by this. They're tormenting spirits. And, and maybe it's not even masturbation. Maybe it's boredom. Maybe you go out and before you know it, you're with another man. And it's very prevalent in today's society. Um, there are people in the entertainment industry that are bragging about having sex with demons. Yeah. Now, back in the day, we would have never heard anything like that. Ever. I can remember Mike and I were married. I knew no, I didn't even know homosexuals existed. And when I found out our incest, I think when I learned about it, we had gone to a movie and there was a big secret in the whole movie. And it was that this woman had a child. It was her father's child. At the end of the movie, she divulges the big secret. My daughter is my sister. Wait a minute. How, how can a daughter be a sister? And Mike said, oh, that must have meant that her daddy had sex with her. I was like, I didn't even know it existed. And today, I cannot believe where the world has gone since I've been born. I mean, I'm sure my mother, who's 94, has seen way more than I have. But it is shocking. And the emails that I am getting, which... I was torn between which message to give because I was thinking about doing a message on um, life in the new normal and dealing with the spirits that we, the grief, you know, I find myself uh, relating to Joe, no, um, Lot. He was vexed by the evil, vexed. And I'm feeling that, vexed at the things that are going on in people's lives that we should never ever even have to deal with that we're having to deal with. We're living in the days of woe. Woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. Those are the days we're living in. And how the enemy is getting so bold. He's always been bold, but he's in your face bold now yeah, right. with his, his stuff. Forcing it on us. Grandparents emailing. My beautiful granddaughter has decided she's not a girl. It, it just is vexing. Yes. But that's where we are. So this can be generationally inherited and the Ten Commandments makes that perfectly clear. He says, you shall have no other gods before me and I will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now we all think, oh, well, good, I'm safe there. But that word safe has to do with loyalty. Those who are not loyal to me, and before we knew Jesus, we were all our own gods, which is idolatry. Therefore, it is a perpetuating, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. You know how many people that is? For, the mother, for, for two people who have children, 60 for this one and 60 for that one. So you've got a gene pool 
of 120 people's characteristics that are coming down the chute to form that one baby. And they come with grave clothes. They come with grave clothes. Even King David said, I was born in iniquity. Well, I used to think that was because his mama was promiscuous until I understood. Every person born after Adam and Eve are born with a capital S stamp on them, and it's sin. And we need a Savior. Okay, so any type of continued perversion can bring this to a person. Promiscuity, prostitution, having many sexual partners. Yoga, I'm shocked at the amount of churches that are teaching yoga and they're going to Christianize it. No. Um, another thing that they started doing in churches was, um, I'm not even going to be able to pull up the name of it, but it's like a big maze or something in a circle. Well, yes, labyrinth. Yeah, they're doing that in churches. A, a pastor asked me one time, he says, why do you think people are getting involved in all of this stuff? And I said, because they're bored. They're not experiencing the power of God in church. So they're, they're, they're um, seduced and excited by new stuff. Satan's stuff. Pornography. I, I was shocked to learn that women watch it. You know what? If, if you're wrapped in flesh, it's all there. It's all there. These are all things of the flesh. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, educated, uneducated, um, any nationality in the world. It's wrapped in flesh, and it likes these kinds of things. Um, activities that are against God's Word. I had a woman one time tell me, because she was struggling with some stuff, so I'm, I'm an investigator. <laughs> so I'm asking questions. So I asked her, have you ever committed adultery? She said, yeah, more than once. She said, but can I tell you that was the best sex I ever had? I said, you want to know why? And I didn't even know I knew why. <laughs> I mean, God does this sometimes. He'll give me an answer to something that I don't know. And so the woman in, in, my, in my flesh woman said, yeah, I want to know. I'm like, yeah, I want to know. So this is what came out. It's nothing new. Deborah mentioned it last night. The devil came and said something to Adam and Eve, and it was the fact that the reason God doesn't want you to eat from that is because you're gonna, you're gonna be like him. You're gonna know. And so she got offended that God was holding out something on her. She looked at it, it was something to be desired. So she ate. Same thing with this. You're married. You know you're not supposed to do that. Satan has an anointing, if you will, an evil anointing, that causes his stuff to be more desirable than what God has given us. 
It's an anointing, an evil anointing. And if we knew that we were being seduced by an evil anointing, we would say, I'm not touching that. Get away from me. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something funny. I left. We've had three deaths in our family two weeks ago. Well, in the last week and a half. And so Mike couldn't leave his job that much. You know, we have to close the office for a half a week. And so he couldn't do that. And so I, it was my relatives. One was his. We did. He did go to that funeral. But on my side, the other two, um, he didn't close the office to come. So the very, the second day that I was away from home, he said, "I got the strangest text last night." I said, "You did? Yeah." It said, "Hi, sweetie. This is Jen." I'm going to be in your area the next couple of days. Why don't we get together? I said, and what'd you do? He said, well, I texted back and said, I don't know anybody named Jen, so you must have the wrong person. And I said, it didn't dawn on me when he was reading it to me. And then I went, oh. I know what that was. Because I, Gail Patton years ago did a teaching on witchcraft and she said witches will assign someone to go and seduce your husband. Pastors especially. They really love to do that. And when I got out of that meeting, I went and called my husband immediately. <laughs> I said, you be watchful. <laughs> I was binding those witches in the name of Jesus. And I usually do that, but I mean, it was just like a death, a death, a death, you know, and all the details. And so I, I was not on my game. And I said, honey, I just started praying. I bind every witch every spirit of seduction that would be sent to you while I'm away from home. I bind them in the name of Jesus. I said, and you be watchful. <laughs> but isn't that, he's never gotten anything like that when I'm home. I said, and don't answer anymore. That was a hook, honey. <laughs> you don't answer texts like that. You swipe them off. <laughs> but that was kind of strange. They know. They watch. There was a woman here one time who said, did you know that um, witches have their own schools? This is before I didn't know anything about witches. I had, to, I had a crash course. Literally a crash. <laughs> and a fall and a fall and a fall and a fall. <laughs> Took me a while. but Anyway, I said, no, but it doesn't surprise me. But today, you know what I would say? Really? Which one did you go to? Because <laughs> then she said, and did you know that when they graduate, they get appointed to a minister or a ministry? Oh, wow. I said, well, that doesn't surprise me either. And I had already told her I didn't have but a minute because I needed to go down to the room. And she kept on and on and on. And I, I had told her when she said, I just have a minute. So I got up and I, I touched her on the hand and I said, I don't mean to be rude, but I have to go. And I got up and turned around and it was like my left foot was nailed to the floor. I went straight down. Spent the rest of my camp back there on the back row with my foot propped up on a pillow. Glenn found me some old crutches here and I hobbled home after the meeting was over, but I, I didn't minister. So... It's a very real thing. Okay, so pornography, what happens when you, when men are partaking, and women, spirits, God showed me a picture, spirits coming out of the screen, 
and coming into the person. The question I had posed to God was about homosexuality because my cousin's son, her only son, is gay. And I was, Lord, we have a lot of stuff in our family. Where did that come from? Well, her husband, she didn't know, had an addiction to pornography. He would skip work to go to those triple X theaters on the side of the road. I don't know what goes on in there, but he would hang out there. And God showed me that while he was watching pornography, in the privacy, he's, an, he's a, an adult in the privacy of his own home, and he should be able to do what he wants to do. Those young men will say that. But while they're watching, spirits are coming out of that screen. Perversion, homosexuality, bestiality, lesbianism, unclean spirits, all manner of demons are coming through that screen, and then they're they're going all around the house visiting your little ones. And those spirits went into the husband and attached themselves to his seed. And when he impregnated her, all those familiar spirits of homosexuality, all of those spirits of perversion, they all went with his seed into that womb. Now, this made me rethink because they'll say, I was born that way. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Those spirits went in there, those familiar spirits. And you know what a familiar spirit is? It's like I said a while ago. I wasn't molested, but I had spirits of a person who was. Must be in the family line somewhere. No doubt. But I didn't have the molestation, the spirit of molestation, but the manifestations, which I call familiar spirits. See, the demon is in you. The familiar spirits are out here. It's a spirit that is familiar with the family and you, and it follows the bloodline, and it will guide, protect, and lead you in ways that are contrary to the ways of God, the plans and purposes that God has for you. So, and, and this was a good illustration. My mom... When my dad died, she remarried. The man was a veterinarian. And she would go in when he had surgeries, on the day he had surgery, and she would hand him the instruments and stuff. She said, you want to hear something weird? I said, what? When an animal dies, if there's a flea, a tick, a worm, any, they all vacate the body as soon as it dies. Wow. And they're looking for another host. You know, because they are parasites, like demons. They've got to have a body in order to live. Demons are the same way. So, I'm not saying this to freak you out, <laughs> but if you have someone in your family who is near death, I have begun to bind those spirits to their bones that will go to the grave and stay there and not attach to another family member. Because that's a very real thing too. If the, if the daddy dies and he's full of lust, when he dies, they vacate the body and look for the next most likely candidate. And I saw, I saw that demonstrated in a documentary about, um, it was some football player. He ended up murdering some people. And he had never had a violent 
streak in him, but his daddy was a very violent man. And his best friend said, something happened to him after his daddy died. And then he murdered these people, and he was gay, and this was all a big shock to the sports world and everything. But I could see the spirit, the demon, the familiar spirits, all of that at work. That's what I love most about learning about deliverance, mm -hmm. is that you, you, uh, you can understand now why these things are. I used to just have questions. One of my questions was, where do these thoughts of murder, it was actually my brother used to agitate me and I had that, I had a rage that came from the spirit of abortion. A rage, a murderous rage. I'd never had an abortion, it's another familiar spirit. My grandmother tried to abort my mother. It didn't work, but those spirits came into my mother and then into me and then into my daughter. And it wasn't until she had her baby that I had the knowledge to break those spirits off of her and the baby because she told me when I went, she lived across the state, I went out to be with her. <coughs> she looked horrible. She did, of course, she had a baby. She was not married. And I've understood now that the blessing, you know, children are a blessing from the Lord. And so because she wasn't married, she didn't have the, the blissful feeling of the baby. You know, oh, you know. She said, I never felt that. When I walked in, she was holding it like a sack of potatoes. And the little baby was just clawing its face. It was disturbing. And then my daughter, I thank God that she told me that she, the baby was in the crib. She kept having this feeling that something was happening to the baby. She would run to the crib, the baby's fine. She's fixing a sandwich and she's cutting, slicing a tomato. And she said, I heard that I could take the knife and go and stab her. Then I knew what was going on. Okay, so I was. I said, look, I'm going to pray for you. Don't listen to what I'm saying. I'm not talking to you anyway. And I commanded that spirit. I broke it off of her, commanded those murderous spirits and everything that I knew to pray. And I'm not kidding you. And she had an unloving spirit. She couldn't love the baby. She wanted to love the baby, but she had no love feeling towards that baby. And, and so... I broke it off of her, broke the bastard curse off the baby, broke the spirit of abortion off the baby, and um, I was there for a week. And over the that night, we went to bed. The next morning, she's nursing the baby, and she's not holding it like a sack of potatoes. She's holding it like a mama would hold a baby, and she's fooling with its little ear and, you know, touching its hair and... And just, I watched her fall in love with that baby. It was, it was amazing. And yes, praise God that we, when we see these things, we can address them. So that the thing is not perpetuated generation after generation after generation. Yeah. It's beautiful. Okay, so fantasizing. Usually when people watch pornography, they will end up satisfying themselves. You know, the demon is there. And the, the spirit of the bride of Satan is the spirit that will, what he does in these cases, the spirit will claim you as his wife, his, his property that he will use to satisfy himself with, with sexual demons. Um, and there is a veil. In the spirit realm, there is a veil. He, he will hide you, in fact. 
Many people with this spirit will never marry because they're hidden. I had a girl one time, beautiful girl. She was telling me how she desired to be married. And she said, it is the strangest thing, Carla. I could be with a few of my friends and we'll go somewhere. And the men in there will look at all the friends and just pass by me like I am invisible. I had learned about this. I said, were you by any chance molested as a child? And she started to cry. I said, I know what this is. Let's break it. It's the spirit of the bride of Satan. Don't let it freak you out. It's just a spirit. And we're going to cast it out. I'm going to break the curse of it and cast it out. And whenever I pray that prayer, I go through the motion of pulling that veil off of them. I've had more than one say, I felt that. That's weird. I felt it. Well, I've never felt it, but hey, yay. <laughs> so... Many people have a spirit wife or a spirit husband. That's the incubus succubus. And I, I used to see it just as like the incubus, the way I've had to remember that because I would get it mixed up all the time. Okay, the incubus has to go in, I-N. So that's the man part of the spirit. The succubus is the woman part. Because in the world of perversion, that's what the man like. And the spirit of the bride of Satan, with his anointing, will make everything that is illegal more pleasurable. And that's what they want. After watching it on the pornography, they want their wives to do these things. Which is degrading. And hurtful. And causes them not to be able to have that spirit will cause a man and woman not to be able to have normal sexual relations with their husband or their wife they would rather sit in front of a screen and masturbate it's very evil and that's why I want this to be dealt with so if anybody here and if there's nobody here with it I praise the Lord you may have a friend that is being tormented with it. And you'll know what to do for them. Um, <coughs> there are unclean spirits involved. I want to go back to pornography just for a minute. When those spirits were coming out and attaching to his seed, I think that's why we are seeing an explosion of homosexuals. Because pornography was available to anybody who had a TV and a VCR. That's what it used to. They had, I didn't even know, but before VCRs, they had those eight millimeter, millimeter tapes. You know, uh, no. It's like a reel. Yeah, a reel with the, with the film. Um, I guess it's been around forever. They've seen pictures on the walls, you know, in caves and things of this kind of stuff going on. It's been around forever. It's nothing new. Although, the commonality of it is new. I think. Okay. So, um, the spirit wife and the spirit husband one woman who was defending because she didn't have a husband and she said, and if your husband was gone for, you know, amount of time, she wasn't even married, but she said, if, if your husband was gone, I mean, it helps you stay, um, keep you from going and having sex with somebody else. I said, well, so what? I haven't responded. I thought, I'm just going to teach this. I'm going to send it to her. But the reality is, if that's what's keeping you then you have a spirit husband. A spirit husband. And guess what? When you get that man, he's not going to be able to satisfy you the way it did. And you will steal. It will steal 
want to be satisfied. So then you have a husband and that. Right. No. That's why we need deliverance. Fantasizing, if you spend time fantasizing, and there's familiar spirits even around that. It, and you know what else? What, be careful what you have in your homes. Oh, spirits attach to things. Spirits are drawn to certain things. Um, if I, you know, if I do the investigation and don't find it in the person, I'm saying, okay, so let's take a look at what you have in your house. And I start asking them about that. Because books, I read a book one time, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I was at the airport. I had packed my Bible. Oh, I don't have anything to read. I'll just go in the bookstore. It was a bestseller. I love a good mystery. But about two-thirds of the way into the book, you find out she's bisexual. Well, guess what? I wasn't reading that stuff. I didn't want the imagery. I didn't want the words. So as soon as they would show up at her apartment, I'd start flipping pages. You know? But guess what? There was a familiar spirit in that book that attached itself to me. And one day in a Bible study, a woman was struggling. I was, do, I was doing a teaching on sexual sin and deliverance on sexual sin. She had to run to the bathroom and I didn't see her anymore. forgot she was even there. Everybody was gone. She comes out and she looks like she has been through war in that bathroom. And she wanted to say it, but she wouldn't say it. And I said, listen, let me tell you what Satan does. I know what he's doing. He's telling you, you better not tell her. You better not say it. They're not going to think the same about you anymore. The devil will blackmail you into keeping quiet about it because if you let it be known, somebody might deal with it. So be careful with your secrets. That's where his power is. Don't go home with it. If you have a deep, dark secret that is being guarded and Satan is telling you to keep it a secret, that's the very thing you need to come up here and say, I've got a secret. And get it out. So it can be dealt with. Because he's blackmailing you. She, she finally says, I said, if, if you will just say it, it will break the secret. His power is broken. So she thinks a minute and she says, I'm sexually attracted to you. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> but you know what? I call it being in the zone. When I'm in the zone, it goes right past me. My flesh woman hears it inside. I'm going, oh, what? But, but when I'm in the zone, I just sat my Bible down and I got up and went over and started breaking that curse and the spirit and calling the spirits out. She got deliverance. I hugged her. She went home. And it's like it never happened. That's the good thing about it. You don't carry it. It's amazing, actually. Can't even remember it. I mean, I remembered it. But when I left the house, I mean, the two ladies, the lady that owned the house where the Bible study was, they were just sitting there. I don't even know how you got past that. And I said, I, I don't know either. It's just when I'm in the zone, I don't hear it. It doesn't affect me. But when I got down the road a little ways, I said, Lord, where in the world? What? You know there is not. He said, remember that book you read? And I was like, oh my gosh. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. The devil doesn't miss an opportunity. He wants you to be ignorant of his devices. Yes, he does. Marine spirits. This is how I got rid of, of my thing, it was listening to, there was a, a big meeting in Colorado, Deliverance. Oh, I wanted to go so 
bad. I didn't have the money to go, anybody to go with me. But a girl in the town where I lived had gone and she had all the cassette tapes of the meetings. So she, when I found out about it, I asked her if she would let me listen to them. So I'm listening in the car when I have to drive back and forth. We lived way out in the woods, so it was a long way to anywhere. So I would listen to a lot. And I, I could show you where on the dirt road I was when I got rid of that. Because she was talking about marine spirits. And water was one of the ways that it would seduce. In a hot shower, at the beach, that's when this thing would seduce. Then I figured out that's why all these people on spring break are running to the beaches. Because those marine spirits are strong. They are seductive. There is drunkenness. There is lewd, lewdness, nakedness. All manner of evil goes on at those spring breaks. But it was the water. I'll never forget washing my hair in the shower one day. And of course there's soap suds, but I went. Because it actually, I, I thought maybe Mike had snuck into the bathroom. There were hands going over my body. It was freaky. And I didn't know anything about this stuff at that time. It freaked me out. But now I understand it. That, that demon. And it's, it can work with marine spirits. In the tape, she said, that's why you have to be careful when you have teenage children and they're spending too long in the shower. Mm -hmm. So there can be marine spirits involved. Unclean spirits. Serpentine spirits. That's why um, in yoga, they're going to they're going to release the the monster in your chakras that snake spirit the serpentine spirit people in um, other religions hindu hinduism that it's a kundalini spirit can be involved with the spirit of the bride of satan There are lying spirits involved in deception. And see, when you have multiple sexual partners, and I think this is one reason that our world is so crazy. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 that who you join yourself to, you become one with. God designed that for a husband and a wife. But when you are outside the covenant, it's demonic. And when you part from them, they take a piece of you with them. If this was you, or a person who has multiple sexual partners, that, you know, they all have a piece of your soul, so you're scattered. Your, your mind is not even whole. Your soul is not whole. So you have a lot of confusion, troublemaking, decisions, trouble doing the right thing, just fogginess and, you know, because this is what your mind looks like. If we could see ourselves in the spirit, there'd be a lot of Swiss cheese walking around. Mm -hmm. Fragmented soul and mind. The mind is part of the soul. Okay. Um, so... We're going to do some deliverance. Okay, I think we all, do we all understand what uh, soul ties are? You all know the biblical soul tie that was godly was between David and John. Uh, thank you, I get my characters all mixed up. Yes, and it said that, that their, their souls were knit together. 
You know, you could take a piece of fabric and try to pull it apart, and it might rip and tear. But have you ever tried to pull apart something that was knitted? It ain't happening. But we can break those things in the spirit. And here's another thing about a soul tie. You lose authority over your own body. And God showed me that like a man in a, in a boat fishing. The fish are swimming. They can go anywhere in the lake they want to. But the man throws the line with a hook and a lure. And the fish takes the bait. And it gets hooked. Now, the fish no longer has total authority over its own body because it's, it's hooked to the line of the fisherman. And he can do, he can jerk it over here and jerk it over there and let some string out and make it think it's free and then he jerks it back and pulls it out. That's the same thing that happens to us with a soul tie. You wonder why this person keeps showing up in your dreams it's a soul tie. They're tra it becomes a bridge then that they can travel back and forth on and visit you. Even think about you and project themselves to your mind or whatever. You can get their problems. Jerry said that this morning. You can get their problems, their financial junk, their struggles, dissension, strife, diseases, all manner of things travel over that soul tie so it's important to break the soul tie so if you you know if you were molested if you if you were the victim of incest for many years we're going to break the soul ties we're going to um, restore your soul and your mind so that you can think right get all those demons out of your sex organs they, they lodge there. Sometimes it can be the root of problems in your bladder, your, your urethra. Is that the right word? Your uh, kidneys, your rectum, depending on what was done. So we want the things out of there. Okay, so I want you just to stand up and then, then we can sit back down, but... It's kind of nap, getting close to lunch. I thought it was nap time, but it's 11.25. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, first I'm going to break the generationally inherited curses. Here's my prayers. Okay, we're going to start repeating this, and when you get tired and want to sit down, just feel free to sit down. Okay, so let's just repeat. Father, Father in, the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break the generationally inherited curse of the spirit of the bride of Satan and other curses that came down upon me through my father's bloodline. Every unholy, spirit Every unholy spirit that came into me, came into me from, my father, from my father when I was conceived, I, was conceived. I, command you to get out of me now, I command you to get out of me now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And I give leave, I give leave to, the to the familiar spirits. That's the fleas and ticks. Okay. <laughs> those, those that hang around you. Um, that have followed me down my father's bloodline to track me, trace me, guard me, guide and direct me in ways that are contrary to the plans and purposes that God has for my life. Go now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break the generationally inherited curses that came down upon me through my mother's bloodline. 
the spirit of the bride of Satan, the spirit of the bride of Satan. and every unholy spirit, and every unholy spirit that, came that came into me from my mother, from my mother when, I was when I was conceived. I bind you, I bind you and break your power and command you to get out of me now in Jesus name now if you know things that have come down your mother's bloodline and you know things that have come down your father's bloodline let those be in your mind as we cast these things out especially um, infirmities if you know the infirmities that were in your father's bloodline and your mother's bloodline that have come down on you, I want you to name those right now, just un quietly on your breath. All the infirmities that came down from mother and father in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of infirmity. I break the curse of death and the spirit of infirmity that came down from the mother's bloodline and the father's bloodline and I command you to get out of God's people now. Get out. Say them out loud now. Get out. Say your diseases. If you've got them in your body, name them now. Get out. Say it and tell it to get out in the name of Jesus. I give leave to all the familiar spirits that have followed me down my mother's bloodline to track me, trace me, guard me, guide and direct me in ways that are contrary to the plans and purposes that God has for my life. Go now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, bind I bind and break the power and command out of me, out of me. name your adverse personality traits that you got from your mama and from your daddy. Gossip, criticism, um, critical spirits, um, curses, calling you stupid, all of those things, anything. You're ugly, you'll never have a husband, all those curses that came from your mama and from your daddy. We break the power of those things right now and command them to get out. All their personality traits, their evil tendencies go with lying and stealing and gambling and drinking and uh, beating and... Um, All their traits. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I now bind, break, and loose myself and my children from any and all evil curses, charms, vexes, hexes, spells, jinxes, psychic powers, bewitchments, Witchcraft, sorcery, Freemasonry, fraternities. Um, sororities. I thank you. I couldn't think of the female one. Sororities. Um, and I break every oath, covenant, dedication, and cancel any any dedication that were made on my behalf when I was in the loins of my forefathers. Because you know, they, they dedicate their future generations. So we break that right now in the name of Jesus. I call down fire from God to destroy the altar that Satan has erected for my life. And I give leave to the unholy angel, doesn't God appoint a guardian angel to us? Angels, so does Satan. So we're getting rid of them. We give leave to those unholy angels that Satan appointed to me 
at the time of my conception in Jesus' holy name. You remember the cartoon with an angel on his shoulder and the devil? You know, people who make these movies and cartoons, they know some stuff. I break and destroy any ungodly yokes that were placed on me by anyone. And I yoke myself to you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for freeing me. I now cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ and give you thanks. Amen and amen. Okay, now we're going to break the soul ties with whoever molested you or hurt you, incested you, abused you, uh, mistreated you in any way that would give Satan access to use you as a sex slave. Also, incubus and succubus. Incubus and succubus. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't called out the spirits yet. Okay. Okay, so, um, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ I, break soul ties I break soul ties with, with and you know who it is, so you just under your breath can voice those names out. I send his or her soul spirit and spirit back to him or her. And I call my soul and spirit back to myself, cleansed and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I ask that you would heal my mind and restore my soul in Jesus' name. I now command out of me any and all unclean spirits that came into me through that relationship. Get out in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Out. All those unclean spirits that came into you, molestation, rape, incest, abuse, violence, pain, go in the name of Jesus. Infirmities, go in the name of Jesus. I command all the familiar spirits that attach themselves to me through that relationship to leave me now. Go in the name of Jesus. And Father, I now reclaim and ask that you restore back to me the authority over my body that was forfeited through that soul type. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, if you have been tormented by that spirit of the bride of Satan, and it's an opportune thing. It may be, maybe it hasn't visited you yet. But, not to say that it will, but it will wait, like, I don't know, maybe wait till you're a widow or divorced or something like that before it shows up and makes its offer to you. Um, we're going to break that spirit of the bride of Satan. And if anything like that ever comes to you, don't try to figure out what it is. Sometimes we spend too much time trying to figure out what it is and why it has a right to come. Just in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. That's what you need to do. In the You're going to have to open your mouth. You can't think it with your head. In the name of Jesus, you get out of here and don't you ever come back. Yes, amen. Yes, in the, name of Jesus. the power is in the name of Jesus. You know, when casting out spirits... He did not say that we're going to cast out spirits by his blood no. or by his anything else. It's the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, bind I bind and break the power of the spirit of the bride of Satan. I break every oath, break every oath covenant, covenant, and dedication that was made on my behalf when I was in the loins of my forefathers, 
I call down fire from heaven to destroy that altar, that sacrificial altar that Satan had erected for my life. And I give leave to the unholy angel that was appointed to me at birth. I thank you, Father, for giving me power over all the power of the enemy. And I exercise that power now. Satan, today I give you a spiritual writ of divorcement. I am not your bride. I now remove from myself your veil. That veil that has caused me to be identified with you as being owned by you so that no one else can have me. If you're unmarried and you want to be married, it may have hidden you from your future husband or wife. So we pull that veil off today and make you available to the man that God has for you. But Satan, we bind you from sending any losers. Okay. I bind and break the power of that spirit of the bride of Satan that hinders a healthy sexual relationship with my husband, if that applies to you. That spirit that is present that allows demons to have sexual rights to my body to be used for Satan's pleasure. I break your power and command you to go. That spirit that torments me sexually in my dreams, in my thought life, all during the day, or that rapes me in the night. I break your power and I command you to go in Jesus' name. Okay, now. Now I'm going to call out the spirits. So I just want y'all to take it every once in a while. If I forget to tell you, just take a deep breath and blow it out. They will come out on the breath if they have access. It's kind of like gushing out water and all this stuff goes with it. Okay, so um, first of all, let's say, Father, forgive me, Father, forgive me. For, any for any activities that I have engaged in that gave, a right, that gave a right for the spirit of the bride of Satan to be in my life. Okay, so right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind and break the power of the spirit of the bride of Satan. I command you to leave God's women now. You go in the name of Jesus. All the unclean spirits in the sex organs, come out in the name of Jesus. Come off of their, their female organs. You go in the name of Jesus. All spirits of sexual perversion, go. Perversion, you go. Come out of God's people now. All the unclean spirits, seducing spirits, you come out right now. Seducing spirits, uh, spirits of, of, I call it the hoochie-coochie spirit. It likes to parade and show their wares. I break that power now in the name of Jesus. All lying spirits, lying spirits, like you're never going to be married. You're not going to be married. You may as well let me have my way with you. That's what the spirit of bride of Satan would say. All deception, you go. Get out. Deception, go in the name of Jesus. All idolatry. Father, forgive me for idolatry in Jesus' name. Now, all spirits of idols, go in the name of Jesus. You need to ask God, is there anything in my house that is not pleasing to you? He'll show it to you and you get rid of it. Destroy it. I command all spirits of rape. I break your power off of God's women. Rape spirits, you go. Violence, go in the name of Jesus. Being beaten, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. 
All molestation spirits, you go in the name of Jesus. All spirits of fornication. And that doesn't just mean the sex act. It means anything that is illegal in the sight of God. That's fornication. Uh, petting would be considered fornication. Petting, heavy petting that people do. Um, oral sex, anal sex. All of those go under fornication. You go in the name of Jesus. Kundalini spirits come out of God's people right now. All those yoga spirits. Every posture in yoga is a, a, a bodily worship to some false god. I command all those kundalini spirits right now. We sever the head of that serpent right now. I sever the head of it. I command it to come off of your spine now. All serpentine spirits, you go. Spirits of incest, I break your power and command you to get out in Jesus' name. The spirit of yoga and all those chakra spirits, having your chakras opened up. And the third eye right here, that's where it comes up, right there. I blind that third eye in the name of Jesus. All sodomy spirits, you go in the name of Jesus. All spirits of oral sex, anal sex, lesbian sex, homosexual sex, go in the name of Jesus. I had one lady say, oh, does that mean I have to get rid of all my sex toys? <laughs> yes. Get rid of your sex toys. You don't make an opportunity, an occasion. If you're on a diet, you don't buy chocolate cake and ice cream and sit it around. All dedications and ceremonies that were performed over you. I break the power of them now in the name of Jesus. I command all of those spirits from the spirit of the bride of Satan and all of these come out of the blood now. Come out of their blood. Come out of their organs. Come out of their heart, their stomach. Come out of their eyes, their ears. You get out all unclean spirits. Come out of the brain. All the imagery, I bind you and break your power. Erase them, Lord. I ask you to e push the, the uh, erase button on their mind so that they don't see those images anymore. Uh, come out of their mouth. Come off of their tongue, their lips, their cheeks, the inside of their mouth. Uh, the esophagus. Come out of their esophagus in Jesus' name. Come out of the heart, the liver, the kidneys, the bladder, your intestines. I command all those unclean spirits come out now in the name of Jesus. And every other person's DNA that has lodged in your brain, I speak destruction to it right now in the name of Jesus and command it to come out of your body. And now I speak healing. Oh, and masturbation. I come against the spirit of masturbation. I command those spirits to come off of your hands, off of your fingers, off of your legs, the muscles in your legs, the muscles in your buttocks, um, every, every form that you have used your body for in an unclean manner. I, I command those spirits to come out in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, just raise your hands. Father, I speak healing right now to every woman. I speak healing to their body. I speak healing to their minds. I speak healing to their spirits and their emotions. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that the spirit of the bride of Satan is no longer in their lives. In Jesus' name. And, and Father, let them, let them uh, go home and pray. If that spirit has been tormenting them to break it off of their children. I'm gonna this afternoon I'm gonna be talking about deliverance with children. Um, but you don't do it with them verbally. When they're asleep you, you you can break the spirit of the bride of Satan off of them in masturbation and whatever else you've noticed in them. Command those unclean spirits to come out in the name of Jesus and break the generational curses. Okay, God bless you. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.